Hey, what's up everybody? Retro Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, we're going to dive in, tour, and test out this 500 gigabyte retro game console hard drive right here that I found on Amazon. This is a two-in-one setup. It gives you access to Retrobat as well as Play Night. And across the board, we have over 38,290 total titles on here. So definitely excited to test this out. Let's go ahead and unbox this first. So inside here, we have a white enclosure and it actually connects over to a PC of our choosing via this cable connection right here. So one end plugs into the enclosure. The other end is a USB um, connection and you're gonna go ahead and plug that directly into your PC. So I'll go ahead and simply insert this in just like that. And again, the other end is USB. So plug it into any USB port on your PC. So I'm gonna do just that. We're gonna actually dive in Take a full tour of what this offers on both sides. So we'll jump into Retrobat as well as Play Night and see what the experience is like on here. All right, guys. So here we are booted up into the Retrobat side of this game drive. Now, I want to apologize for the layout here. I usually like to try to just do a screen capture, but I was having trouble actually capturing everything on my PC today using this drive. For whatever reason, it just was not working out for me. So that's why I chose to film you know, externally here rather than doing a capture. So, you know, bear with me with the uh, resolution and obviously a little bit of glare here as I film this on my monitor. So we're going to dive into this and take a full tour. I do want to show you guys a couple things before we kick that portion of this video off, though. This uses the Bodicera Club theme on here by default, and you can see the layout within. We have our game lists that circulate on the left-hand side, and then each one will load in to this little box on the right hand side. So if we jump into Sega Saturn, for example, it loads in. We have a text list on the left, right hand side inside of this square. We have a um, you know, some cover art. We have a video preview in some cases. Sometimes it'll just be a solid shot uh, from within the game. We have a description for each title and some data on each title as well. I'm personally not a big fan of this particular theme. I just find that sometimes the font is really hard to actually read. And if we go over here and we're just kind of cruising through outside of each collection, notice the font. It's super small and hard to read down in the bottom left corner. So like this one, it's 54 games, but it's hard to tell the difference between whether that's 54 or um, 59 or 69 or 64. It's just really hard to read the font for me personally. So I'm going to go in and actually change the uh, UI settings. So we have three theme sets on here by default. We have this Bodicera Club Reloaded. We have Carbon, which is just a stock one, really no bells and whistles. And then we have um, Art Flix, which is my personal favorite theme. Love using this on Bodicera, and you can certainly use it here on Retrobat as well. So we're going to load this one in just because it reads a little bit better here. So notice now we switch to we have a nice background for each collection. And then we have the circulating game list on the right hand side as opposed to the left hand side. And the font is just a little bit more readable. So we'll kick everything off here with all games. That's going to be your master list. And if we take a look right over here, you can see we have 38,251 titles on the Retrobat side of things. Now remember that the actual game drive itself advertised um, 3,000 or excuse me, 38,291 titles. So I assume that we have the missing 40 over on the play night side of things. We'll get to that after we comb through everything on Retrobat. So we'll jump in here. You can see the layout in your all games list. So we have on the right hand side, either a screenshot box art or what I love most logos. I think that the logos just read better. Like this clearly reads better, better than this right here. This is hard to know what it is unless you look in the bottom left corner. But this right here, you can tell exactly what this title is just by looking at it over here, you know, or over there, or over there, or down there. It's just a little bit more readable. So it's um, a little frustrating that not everything is laid out the same way. I'm seeing a lot of box art on the right hand side, but then you'll see logos thrown into the mix sometimes as well. So a little inconsistent. I'm definitely seeing some duplicate titles as well, but we'll comb through each collection and we'll get a better feel for what is offered on here. So let's back out. We have our favorites collection. Favorites is going to be a collection you put together yourself, add all your favorite titles in there for easy access. Retrobat is going to be your settings for individual emulators. And you can see each of your emulators listed over here. You can go in, make adjustments, tweak things. 
do whatever you need to do within there. So we'll back out. Here we have our first game collection, Amstrad, and this is 25 titles. We'll jump in here so you see the layout. Box art pretty much consistent throughout all of these. We have it over here, over here, and then down here in the bottom left. So I'd love to see some diversity there. Um, you know, not super, um, you know, well put together in that they use the same image across, you know, three different places, but it is what it is, I suppose. I would have made it like a logo over here, maybe box art over here or a video preview. And then um, down here, you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, but I like to make it a little bit different when I put together builds. All right, so we'll back out of Amstrad and we'll go down to Final Burn Neo, which is the next collection, 97 titles here. Now, this is what I would love to see. This is the layout that I think just looks the most well polished. We have logos over here, video preview over here, another logo up here across the top of our marquee on this arcade uh, cabinet. We also have down here box art, and then we have our title, description, developer, and then all the data for this particular title as well. And each one of these populates in beautifully. I just think it's very easy to go through it like this, find the titles you're looking for without having to you know, drop down here to the bottom left corner. You can go off the logos. You can go off of the video preview. Another logo up there. It's just very well polished. Much more attractive than, you know, if we jumped into Atari 2600, for example, where everything is literally the same image, you know, the same image here, here, and here. Just looks really blah, in my opinion. But, you know, if the games work, that's really all that matters in the end. But, you know, layout does factor into this. So we'll go back up. Got ahead of myself a little bit. So Final Burn, Final Burn Neo had 97 games. Name Classic Arcade, 2,116 titles in here. We'll take a peek. So in here, we have one that has the logo. The rest have box art. And again, same image in three different places. So I'm not seeing a ton of duplicates in here, which is good. And we'll go down to the next collection over here. And we have Atari 2600, 855 games. We have Atari 5200, 95 games. Atari 7800, 65 games. Atari Jaguar, 64 games. Sufami Turbo, massive collection, 2,449 games. We'll jump in here and see, the, see what it looks like within. So this is another one. Looks really good, in my opinion. Logo over here. Uh, we don't have a video preview inside the screen over here, but we do have at least a still shot, and it differs from everything on this side and down here. So I definitely like the way this looks. Um, do we have multiple titles? No, it doesn't look like there's too many duplicates in here. Can't say that there's none, but, um, yeah, it definitely looks pretty good inside this collection. So we'll back out. Wonder Swan over here, 113 games. Wonder Swan Color, 91 games. ColecoVision, 146 games. TurboGrafx, 16, 298 games. Game & Watch, 59 games. NES, 1,933 games. So, that seems to be pretty extensive there. We're back to that layout where it has the same image across the board. Definitely seeing some foreign releases here. Some people love those. Some people are totally uninterested in those. I don't really care one way or another in all honesty. Um, not seeing tons of duplicates here either. So that's a good sign. All right, so back out of NES. Here we have original Game Boy, 1,527 games. Take a quick peek in here. And we're also seeing, like, like right here, foreign releases in here, which will account for why the game list is so extensive for this particular collection. We'll continue on Super Nintendo, 761 games in here. Pretty well put together. Still the same image across the board, but it at least reads a little better just because of how well put together the box art was for this collection. Everything's very vibrant, very readable. We'll back out. Super Game Boy. And one thing I want to give you guys a spoiler alert on here, I'm not certain, but I would say that 95% of the plug and play drives that I've reviewed, they duplicate Super Game Boy and Game Boy Color. So we have 1,289 titles for Super Game Boy. Next collection down is N64. Let's skip that and let's go to Game Boy Color. What do you know? Same exact game count. 
1,289 games. And if we jump into Game Boy Color, it kicks off with 007, The World Is Not Enough, followed by 10 Pin Bowling, followed by 102 Dalmatians, Puppies to the Rescue. And I've come across this countless times, so I already know what we're going to see here. Shocker. 007, The World Is Not Enough, Game Boy Color, 10 Pin Bowling, Game Boy Color, and 102 Dalmatians, Puppies to the Rescue. So we can take our you know, total count for this and remove at least 1,289 games from it because these are just blatant duplicates, you know, with these two collections. It's just padding the, you know, total number of games included here. Um, but, I mean, these are great titles. We just don't need them in here in two separate collections. It doesn't do us any good. So, we'll back out of that. Let's take a look at N64, one of my favorite collections. 461 games in N64. Um, we're back to that layout. Well, this one is giving us the same image across the board. This one's giving us the same image, but it looks like the actual box over here. So, minor difference, but um, we're seeing some foreign releases in here. I'm not seeing duplicates, but there's definitely foreign releases, which is, you know, hit or miss depending on personal preference. Seems to be pretty well inclusive though. Lots of titles that I'm familiar with. Let's go down to the M's and just make sure that the most popular Mario games are here. That'll give us an indication as to whether, you know, everything has been put together well or if they left off, you know, some classic favorites. So Mario Golf, Mario 64. We have um, this one, which is a foreign release. Mario Party 3, Mario Party 2, Mario Party 3. Oh, this one says Mario uh, I was reading that as Mario Party 3. Mario Party, Mario Party 2, and then 3 over here. Uh, Mario Story, Mario Tennis. So we have all of our favorites here. Let's check wrestling games, just because I'm a big fan of wrestling for N64 especially. I like classic wrestling, but I love the classic wrestling games. Uh, I know a lot of people that aren't even wrestling fans that love those, so I don't think I'm alone there. You got your WCW titles, your WWF titles like WWF No Mercy. I'm sure somebody's going to ask about those. I saw Tony Hawks are there, so that's good. Let's just dip down here to the W's and see what we have. So we have, if we have Backstage Assault, we got to have everything because that is the worst wrestling game ever made. Um, WCW Mayhem, Nitro, Revenge. World Tour. Awesome. All WCW games are here. Let's check WWF. Got to have No Mercy. We do. Awesome. Attitude, No Mercy, Warzone, WrestleMania 2000. All inclusive. This is a great collection. All right, so we'll back out. We can skip Game Boy Color. We already tackled that. Game Boy, uh, excuse me, Nintendo GameCube. 26 titles here. So actually, this is actually pretty nicely laid out again i like the logos here video preview logo up top and then box art here data down here and a nice background too i will add time splitters one and two true crime new york city uh wave race awesome game there for some final fantasy hunter of the reckoning's good madden medal of honor need for speed a couple need for speeds paper mario Soul Calibur 2, Star Fox Adventure, Super Smash Brothers Melee, got to have that. Um, so no Mario Kart, Double Dash, which kind of sucks. It's one of the most popular Game Boy. I keep saying Game Boy. Most popular GameCube titles. So that's unfortunate. There's definitely a lot to be desired here, but there is also a great assortment of games at the same time. So i just love to see more, if anything. We'll back out of GameCube. Game Boy Advance over here, 2,782 games. That's a massive collection. Um, all right, so we're seeing duplicates here right off the bat. One, two, three right there of that one. And we probably have some foreign releases on here, just looking at like this one clearly. Uh, and there's two of them. So yeah, definitely duplicates in here. So that's padding the total numbers. We got to you know, assume that, yeah, there's a lot of duplicates in here. And it could be that there's multiple versions, but still, we don't really need multiple versions, do we? So, all right, so we'll back out of Game Boy Advance. Uh, Nintendo DS, 78 games. I assume no duplicates there. That's not a huge amount. I'm not super familiar with these titles. There's just a, really probably 10 games that I played for this console. 
wasn't a big DS guy. And I never dive in here for emulation, but tons of Pokemon games. And I know that's some of the most popular ones for this because they're really expensive to buy the actual game cartridges. So it makes emulation that much more popular for those titles. So looks like a good assortment there. Nintendo Wii. Um, ooh, what a letdown. One game. It's a good game, but still, Donkey Kong Country Returns. I know that they oftentimes do leave these off because these titles are harder to play with a gamepad controller. Oftentimes you need to have, you know, like an actual Wii remote, a sensor bar and all that to really get the true experience. But yeah, it's, a, it's a, um, definitely a missed opportunity to not load that collection up. The games don't take up a ton of space either. Let's see what Wii U has to offer. Just two games here. Well, they are good games. Zelda, uh, The Wind Waker HD, and Mario Kart 8. Good titles. I'd love to see more titles here because there's some great Wii U titles available. And they perform very well with emulation, but it's a start. So over here we have 13 games. Um, Nintendo Switch. Seven games. Love to see more of those too, but let's see what we have. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Great title. Um, and obviously gives you multiple games in one. We have Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Probably one of my favorite games. I love racing games and I love Crash, so great combo deal there. Um, not familiar with this game. Flashback I know of. Salt and Sanctuary, not familiar with. Super Mario Odyssey, good game. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, good game, and um, fairly recent game too. So those are the seven titles. It's a good start, and there's some good options here. Love to see more, but we can always add more ourselves too. So backing out, Atomus Wave, 23 games. I'm actually a pretty big fan of Atomus Wave. That's definitely my era of and, and type of game. So it looks like some good stuff here. There's some... There's some light gun games in here as well, so pretty impressive. I'm not seeing duplicates, that's good. Sega SG-1000, 98 games. Back to the triple threat of, actually quadruple threat, because we have the same image here, which doubles as our background, which doubles as our image within the TV screen, and also gives it to us down there in the bottom left corner. So three, excuse me, four in total there. At least these are fairly readable, so it's not terrible, but yeah, not how I would lay it out. Um, Sega Genesis, 1,206 games. Looks like a good assortment of titles. You're going to get a lot of crossover with this and Super Nintendo, but different versions, different collections, I get it. Uh, it's not the same as you know just having it title for title, as exact duplicate like we saw with Super Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Good stuff here. And this one, so there's a duplicate of Aladdin, but they are different versions. This is a foreign release. This is the American release. So I'm okay with that. Um, Game, Game Gear over here, 406 games. That's pretty massive. All right, we have Sega Saturn, 37 games. Oh, excuse me, I jumped ahead. Genesis 32X, 37 games there. Sega Saturn, 27 games. Daytona USA, love that game. I love House of the Dead as well. And Die Hard Arcade, we already passed where Die Hard would be. That's not on here. Street Fighter games, House of the Dead's on here. What else? Uh, Virtual Cop, I love that game too. We don't have that one. That's too bad. Uh, Dreamcast, we have 34 games for Sega Dreamcast. So we have Capcom versus SNK, Millionaire Fighting 2001, Crazy Taxi 1 and 2, Dead or Alive 2. Uh, definitely some great games. Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver, love that game. Uh, Marvel versus Capcom 1 and 2. Definitely some good stuff here, Power Stone 1 and 2. This game's drastically underrated, San Francisco Rush 2049. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Soul Calibur. Some Street Fighters, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, probably my favorite here. House of the Dead 2. Good stuff. Definitely a pretty stacked collection for just having, what do we have, 34? Yeah, 34 games. Sega Naomi. This is a great collection as well. Pretty pretty uh, solid number on this too. 
love what this offers. There's going to be some crossover with this and Dreamcast, like right here, Marvel versus Capcom 2. But um, solid collection. Power Stone 1 and 2 should be on there as well. Neo Geo 151 games, Neo Geo Pocket 82 games, Neo Geo Pocket Color 89 games, original PlayStation just 47. I was expecting that to be a little bit more stacked. Uh, I don't play a lot of PlayStation original games anyway, so I'm not bummed out about it, but they don't take up much space, so I'm surprised they didn't add more. Some Silent Hill, we've got some Mega Man, we saw some Resident Evil, Need for Speed, Harvest Moon, lots of Final Fantasies. So they did a good job actually selecting titles, a lot of Crash titles too. So good stuff there. PS2, 41 games. PS2 has Black, that's a good game. Burnout titles, multiple burnouts, Dead, Dead to Rights 1 and 2, Grand Theft Auto, um, Vice City Stories. We also have Grand Theft Auto 3. Uh, definitely missing a few of those there, but not bad. This is a good one, Dax, um, excuse me, Jack and Daxter. Um, what else do we have? Max Payne 2. Got to have the first one. This is the second or third time now that I've seen them add Max Payne 2 to a, you know, plug and play game drive like this, but not the original one. That's kind of weird to me, but NBA Street uh, Volume 2 is a good one. Need for Speed Volume, um, excuse me, Need for Speed Underground 2 is a good one. Got some Resident Evil, Soul Calibur, Silent Hill, SSX on Tour, Battlefront, Time Splitters 2. Um, we saw Time Splitters, I think, in GameCube, if I'm not mistaken. We had both versions there. X Men, good stuff. Um, you know, obviously, I want to have more. Who doesn't? But great start. PSP, we have 91 games. Let's see if they've combined uh, PSP mini games in here. In fact, it actually looks to be true PSP titles so far, anyways. Kind of scroll through here. I'm seeing some games that I like. I saw Harry Potter there, Metal Gear Solid, Monster Jam. A lot of a lot of sports games, racing games. Yeah, these are all true PSP games, so that's good to see. Sometimes you'll see like you know 300 games listed for PSP, and then you dive in, and you know 200 of them are PSP mini titles. Um, so that's not the case here. That's good. PlayStation 3, three games in here. What do we have for them? We have Catherine, which I've never played, but I'm starting to hear a lot of people talking about that game here on the channel because I've reviewed other game drives that included this. A few people were kind of schooling me on what this is all about. It's like a puzzle game. It's supposed to be good. Um, God of War Collection. So this is, you know, a two-in-one title. And The Wolf Among Us, which I haven't played, but I've heard good things about. So that's good that we have three PS3 titles on here. And we're back to our all games list. So that is everything this includes. We'll dive into a couple gameplay demos, but I want to keep it moving and dive into the play night side as well to see what that offers. Hey, All right, guys, so here we are on the play night side now, and we have the 40 missing titles over here that, you know, we were short on the retro bat side, so it makes sense. Now we kick everything off with Brotato up here at the top, Chicken Police, I've heard of Chicken Police, um, Creeks, Cult of the Lamb, Cuphead, Dave the Diver, Dead Cells, Disco Elysium, Double Dragon Gaiden, I know that one, uh, and most of these I'm, I'm not familiar with. This is definitely not my typical uh, setup over here. I'm the retro gaming guy for a reason. We've got some Final Fantasies over here. The Flipping Cactus, which I've heard of. Uh, Hades, Inside, Limbo, Little Nightmares. I am a big fan of Little Nightmares, actually. Uh, Monster Prom, Monument Valley, uh, excuse me, Monument Valley, Neo Abyss, um, Nobody Saves the World, Octopath Traveler, Ori in the Blind Forest, Persona 4 Golden. We have RimWorld, Risk of Rain 2, Roots of Pacha, Skull the Hero Slayer, Speed Brawl, uh, Steel Assault, 
uh, Subnautica, Below Zero, System Shock, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, awesome title there. Highly recommend that if you haven't checked that out. Um, the Binding of Isaac, The King of Fighters 2002 Unlimited, great title. The War of Mine, or excuse me, This War of Mine, Tunic, Tunnel of Doom, Vampire Survivors, good game. Wild Frost, Yoku's Island Express. So yeah, I don't, I don't know a ton of these, but definitely some good ones in here. And I'm sure a lot of you guys probably are familiar with these titles. It's just not necessarily my thing. Um, Play Night is very nicely put together. I will say that very user-friendly, very easy to navigate and use. This certainly gets you set up as well. If you wanted to add more titles, you certainly have that ability. So as you jump in here and you click on each title, you can see that it does populate in over on the right-hand side, and you can simply go ahead and click play. I did test this out for a couple minutes. Works very nicely. Um, and, you know, again, it's the same for each of these. If we go to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, populates in nicely on the right-hand side. We get all of our different data in here. Um, just very nicely put together. All right, guys, so we just jumped out of the 500 gigabyte retro game console game drive. And this advertises, again, 38,291 games. And in all honesty, we can take that 38,291 game count and throw it out the window because it's just not accurate. Now, that doesn't mean that this isn't worth it. That's not what I'm saying. But a lot of people will use the total game number as the selling point as to whether this is a great deal or not. And if they see a big hyped up number, they immediately think, oh, this is a great deal. Let me grab this. That's not the case because the numbers never match up correctly. Yes, there's 38,291 ROM files on here. 100%. Totally agree with that. However, there's tons of duplicates. And I'm not talking about titles that were released for Super Nintendo, that were released for Genesis, and also for MAME. You're going to get titles like that, that you have three versions because they were released on three different platforms. That's pretty normal. Um, that doesn't bother me at all because it's the same game, but every version of it does differ slightly. That's okay. I'm talking about the same game in the same collection, just entered in multiple times. That's an issue. That's just padding your overall numbers, and you're basically just marketing a much higher number than what you're actually offering in the end. So um, you know, don't use your total game count on this drive or any drive as your selling point as to whether this is gonna be a fit for you. What you have to evaluate is what games are included for each collection, and are they games that I'm going to consistently enjoy? If they are, then this is a great deal. This is only 40 bucks, or actually less than 40 bucks on Amazon, so it's not a bad deal. It's not overpriced by any means, but you have to evaluate whether or not you know, you're going to actually play what's included on here. If you're not, and you're going to end up deleting half of the games and go in and add your own games, then you're doing a lot of the legwork. So why buy a plug and play setup that's pre-configured if you're just going to go in and overhaul the whole thing or the majority of it? So these are questions you have to ask yourself. At the end of the day, the games do work. They are reliable ROMs. I didn't run into any games that had issues. Um, I, know, I know I didn't dive into a lot of gameplay demos here in this video. That wasn't the point of the video. The point was to just kind of tour through everything. Uh, and report back to you what I thought of it. So I'm doing exactly that. It is a good selection. Some game collections are better than others, in my opinion. Like N64 is phenomenal. There's a lot of great games in there. They run extremely well. Uh, all my favorite titles, personally, were included in there, so I thought that was great. But collections like PS2, um, there's not a lot of games in there for me that I really want to dive into in all honesty there's some good games but there's nothing that i'm really super stoked about uh, that i think i would really spend a lot of time in that's just me personally though and that's what i'm saying when i talk about you know pre-configured plug and play setups you're at the mercy of what's available to you because it's not custom tailored to your specific interests and what you're looking to get out of it you're kind of having to deal with a give and a take you're getting convenience over you know that custom tailored selection so just weigh out the pros and cons, weigh out each collection, see if it lines up with what you're looking for. If it does, and if there's more things that you'll dive into than things that you'll just totally ever you know, enjoy at all, then 40 bucks is really not an uh, outrageous price by any means. It's a high quality drive. It's a cool looking drive. It's easy to connect to any PC. Just consider the fact that you do need a pretty powerful PC to get into all of the games included on here. 
If you just want to dive into the older stuff, then you don't need a whole hell of a lot um, on your PC or, you know, you don't need really impressive specs. But if you want to jump into PS3, you definitely need to have something that, you know, has pretty impressive specs that can handle a lot. So you need decent CPU, decent graphics. Uh, and in most cases, you need pretty much a gaming PC to get into PS3. The other stuff, you definitely don't need a whole hell of a lot. So weigh out the pros and cons, see if it's right for you. I'll put a link up here at the top of your screen, as well as in the description of this video, um, where you can click over and get some additional information on exactly what this has to offer you, what the price point is, time frame on getting it, all that good stuff. So that is going to do it for today. Let me know in the comment section what you guys thought of this video. Let me know what you guys thought of this drive. And I will see you guys again on the next video very soon. If you enjoy the content, please give me a thumbs up on the video. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.